Welcome to SOS, Saving Our Spines, Working Smarter, Not Harder During Spring Yard Cleanup. My name is Jean Cable, and I'm a physical therapist working at Door County Medical Center. These are a few of my lovely co-workers who graciously volunteered to perform the yard tasks you will see later in the presentation. Springtime is normally a time for cleaning up the remnants of fall and winter, as well as starting our planting and lawn care. We thought it would be helpful to put together a presentation with some suggestions, tips, and recommendations for making these tasks less stressful for your back. Even if you try just a few of the suggestions, it could help you prevent a back injury. There. During winter, we may not be as active as we normally are during May through October. It sometimes is more difficult to exercise outdoors due to snow and ice, and it is easier to be more sedentary and that can leave us more vulnerable for injury. Usually the highest number of referrals in physical therapy for back pain come two weeks after the first snowfall and two weeks after gardening starts in earnest in the spring. Think about that. It is usually because we have not done that particular type of activity in a while. We may be active in other ways, but not usually with as vigorous of activity as gardening and lawn care can be. Let's start with a brief review of anatomy of the spine to help you better understand the rationale behind the recommendations we will be demonstrating in the presentation. Many people think the spine is straight, but the spine actually has three naturally occurring curves, an inward curve at the neck, an outward curve at the mid back, and an inward curve of the low back. These curves serve as shock absorbers and also align the joints or facets for optimum stability of the spine. Think of a car with poor alignment. Driving the car in this way is harder on the rest of the car parts. The same is true when the body is performing strenuous activity when not in good alignment. During the following task demonstrations, we will refer to these naturally occurring curves or this natural posture as neutral spine posture. We will show how these maintaining these curves during activity can help prevent injury. To begin with, we will review lifting and bending. These four lifting techniques can help maintain, maintain that neutral spine posture while allowing the bigger muscles, such as your thighs and buttocks, to do more of the work. The power lift. Think weightlifter. See how Crystal's feet are wider apart? The wider your stance is, the closer you are to the object you are lifting. This also increases your base's support and stability during the lift. Think linemen in football. We wanted Crystal to dress in a football uniform, but she just wouldn't. Next, remind yourself to stick your buttocks out, which will encourage bending at the hips versus bending at the waist. This will help you maintain that neutral spine posture during the lift. And lastly, think belly in. Gently draw in your abdominals to fix your core muscles during the lift. You can use this type of lift for heavier items such as bushel baskets, flower pots, or awkward lifts where you may need to use two hands to control the load. Partial squat. This lift is helpful if you need to be in a certain position for a prolonged period of time, such as with weeding the garden as Whitney is doing in front of the rehab center. It's easier on the knees than a full squat. The same principles apply. Whitney has a wide base of support. She is hinging at the hips and not at the waist. And don't forget to draw your belly in. For additional support of your upper body weight, put your forearm or hand on your thigh. This lift can also be used for lighter objects when you only need one hand. Half kneel lift. This lift can get very heavy objects off the ground to a better position to use the power lift. Anna will use the half kneel lift to get the load to a higher position and then finish with the power lift. Again, keep knees wider apart, hinge at the hips, stick the buttocks out, and gently draw the belly in. This lift is very helpful for things such as moving bags of mulch or bricks, and I am calling on Anna when I have to do that type of lifting. Golfer's lift. This lift is also easier on the knees and can be used when you have to bend repeatedly, such as picking up sticks in the yard. You will need to steady yourself by holding on to an object such as a rake or shovel and lift the inside leg back as you 
bend your trunk forward, keeping the spine straight as David does in this demonstration. This lift always reminded me of the drinking birds we had as kids. And now I really, really am dating myself, aren't I? Now on to demonstrating the actual tasks of gardening. Try to think of the four suggestions when you are doing things such as raking, mowing, and trimming. Neutral spine posture, so keeping those three curves. T-Rex arms, keeping your arms close to your body and the load close to your body. Putting at least one foot in the direction you are moving the load, which will prevent twisting of the spine. And don't forget your abdominals. Here, David is demonstrating raking. Notice in the correct technique on the right, he is keeping the rake close and using his body to shift back and forth with the rake versus his upper back. Think David is dancing with the rake, keeping his dance partner close and in step with his body. Rock on, David. Here I am demonstrating mowing. You can ride down any street in Wisconsin and see people bent over their mower with the mower at least three feet ahead of them. Try to keep the mower close to the body, the handle right at your belly, and just walk with it. Think belly in and pivot with the mower so you're not twisting the back. Here Bill demonstrates trimming a tree, and just by putting his foot up on a stool or overturned bucket, you can see how much less strain is on his back. He also noted the loppers I gave him needed a good sharpening. Go Bill! Here we got David again, starting out in a not-so-good position, blowing the leaves from the front of the rehab center. Notice how he changes to a more upright posture, keeping the leaf blower close to his body, T-Rex arms, and moving in line with the blower, not twisting. That is awesome. Here's just a few more gardening tips that you want to keep in mind as you start planting and planning your garden. Change positions and stretch frequently. Break up your gardening tasks. You may be on hands and knees for 30 minutes in the beds and then do an upright task such as trimming or mowing. Try to avoid carrying items. Use a cart or wheelbarrow to transport all tools, plants, mulch bags, etc. For example, think of dragging your mulch bags from your car right into a wheelbarrow versus transporting them one or two different times. Avoid doing things such as planting pots on the ground Put them up on a bench to avoid prolonged bending. Provide upper body support when trimming taller bushes or plants, like Bill's example with the tree he was trimming. You put your foot up on a stool or stagger your stance, and that increases your base of support. Consider raised beds or beds no wider than four feet if you're planting any new beds in your garden. Water weighs eight pounds per gallon. Design your garden with easy access to your water supply. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. And I hope it was helpful for you to see some of these recommendations. And I hope you do try them when you start your gardening this summer. And more than anything, I hope it makes more time for you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Thank you.